Welcome back to the Air Gun Advisor, and today we're going to be doing a close-up look on the compressor that is inside of my Air Gun support vehicle. If you've yet to watch that video, it's a fun video to watch. I'm going to leave a uh, little click tab right here. You can click that and watch that after this video so you can see all the components of my Air Gun support vehicle. But today we're going to look specifically at the Omega Trail Charger Compressor uh, and see why I picked this one to add to my support vehicle. Uh, we're going to run down some features that I really, really like, as well as a couple things you may want to consider adding to this compressor. So without further ado, the first feature that I really, really do enjoy is the fact that it can run not only on uh, your 12 volt inside your car, but it comes with this inverter that allows you to plug it into your home 110 outlet. Uh, a couple of things to note though, it does not have an on and off switch. It does have a fan in here that's going to keep the unit cooler. Uh, but it, I would love to have an on off switch so I could just leave it plugged in all the time. Otherwise that fan is going to be running all the time. Now to use this, it's really super simple. Uh, we're going to first go ahead and unhook the hose here so it's out of the way. And then we're going to undo these alligator clips and unwind a length of wire that is needed to reach the inverter. So I don't have to undo the whole thing, just the portion that I need. The red alligator clip is going to go to the plus which is also, at least on this inverter, slightly red. And then the black alligator clip goes onto the negative. And once that is on, you can go ahead and plug the inverter into your outlet and you'll hear the fan kick on. You also will then be able to turn your compressor on and run it. As I mentioned earlier though, you can also do the same thing off your 12 volt battery on your vehicle. You're gonna plug the red alligator clip to the red terminal on your battery, the black alligator clip to the black terminal on your battery, start your vehicle so your battery doesn't die, and then you can also turn on the compressor and fill up your air gun. Now this compressor is not meant to be filling up super large tanks. This is more of a fill up individual air gun type of compressor. You may be able to top off a pony tank or top off a, a, you know one of your larger tanks, ensuring that you're keeping track of uh, the run times and allowing the compressor adequate time to cool. Something that you may have noticed here, and if you watched my Overland air gun support vehicle video, is this little bump in the wire here. This has not come standard. These are Anderson pole connectors, and I added these so I could then take this and plug it directly into my vehicle in the bed of my truck. All right, so here's the Omega Trail. Now this thing goes up to 4,000 PSI. It's not meant for filling tanks. It's meant for filling air guns. And check this out, I ran electricity back here. I've got Anderson pull plugs that I've attached to this compressor. It doesn't come that way. Again, those Anderson pull plugs, I picked them up on Amazon. And then I've attached the compressor. Now this is the one thing I would say, this is why it's not necessarily something I would take like a hardcore off-road trail but I have this attached here and you can see it's pretty solid. It's not going where I drive around with it back here quite a bit. And it's never fallen over, it doesn't slide around, but I've got, got it attached using magnets. And you saw how I just pulled that off. So I can disconnect this and take it into the house, into the shop if I want to. Uh, it's not permanently mounted here. Those magnets, by the way, are those magnets that you can buy on Amazon that are for handguns or to store under your desk. So they're pretty strong. I want to say they hold up to 40 pounds each. I have two of them, one for the top side and one for the bottom side. And again, those are mounted to my built right industry Molly panels. So slide that back in there like so. And if you're ready to fill an air gun, just bring it on over. See, I got my male disconnect here. I'm going to go ahead and plug this right in. Turn it on, because remember, this is running off a 12 volt. Now, if I was filling the whole air gun, I'd turn on the vehicle just to ensure that my battery didn't die. But for this demonstration, I don't need to do that because I'm not filling it all the way up. Hit the start button, and there we go. We're filling up the air gun. It's all nice and self-contained back here in the back of my pickup truck. And if you're a hunter, this kind of setup means you're never going to run out of air. I love it. As we run through this video, you're going to want to look to the bottom left and bottom right. You're going to notice I'm filling the same air gun from zero to full 
and using this compressor, one off of 110, the other one using 12 volt, just so you can get an example of run times from zero to operating pressure right there on your screen. So keep an eye on those as we talk about the compressor and fill the tank. You'll notice that these alligator clips do store nicely right on the side here so you have it all self-contained. It does come with a fill whip and you'll notice that the fill whip does have a swivel on it so you can uh, move the hose with relative ease anywhere you might want to fill up that air gun. Now something that I added on here, I did add a larger quick disconnect uh, just because of ease of use, I enjoy having that. And then also because I shoot a lot of Brocock air guns and Daystay air guns, and I find it so much easier when that fill valve is underneath the air gun uh, and even some FX air guns to just use this. Uh, it's easier to get out and, and more area, surface area for you to pull down on that collar. So nice storage place right here. Nice little hook to store it on. Again, well thought out. Let's take a look at the top of the unit. This is, now I should state that, the, that this is where you're going to notice a difference. There is another compressor on the market. It looks almost identical to this. It's red, usually sold on Amazon or eBay or other locations. These next two features are the features that differentiate the two units. I've always had these features on my compressor. That's why I think it's a better value because I've had experience with these features and I know that they work. So that's what it allows me to say that. Um, but you know, hey, if you've had other experiences, leave them in the comments down below. So the first stuff, I'm gonna turn this off. It can, it can work on the side, let's flip it this way. So you can also, not only do you have to, or can you run it in the vertical spot, you can also run it horizontally like this. You have, uh, right here, you have your pressure relief. They all of the portable compressors have that. That's not something that's unique. So you just turn the dial and it can shut off automatically at 2,000, 3,000 PSI, whatever your air gun is filled to. Uh, this isn't a fail-safe unit. I would say that I would want you to make sure that you're monitoring the fill of your air gun, although it does have this safety feature for shutoff, as well as two burst discs, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But the features that differentiate this product from others is that it has a water cooling system, and this actually isn't just water. It actually has some antifreeze in it, so in the back of my pickup truck, it's not going to freeze, and it's going to help cool down faster. You also have a grease pot. This is white lithium grease, and every, you know, every couple hours you're gonna turn this two times and they're gonna, going to push some white lithium grease. And I probably turned it the wrong direction. No, I turned it the right direction. It's going to push uh, white lithium grease into the piston and keep everything well lubricated again and help to reduce heat and friction. And the heat and friction on compressors really is what's going to kill them. And then you, and let me talk, tell you about the white lithium grease. That's the same system that the well-known shoebox compressor that's no longer available uh, on the market used. And those things lasted forever. And this is an oilless compressor otherwise. So you do have the grease pot here, but no other oil is needed. Very similar to those shoebox compressors. Matter of fact, if you have been or had run a shoebox compressor for a long time and you've had success with it, just put it down in the comment down below because I think this is very similar to that system, especially at least the way it's lubricated. You have a burst disc up top, which is a safety feature. And the other burst disc, I'll just spin it around one more time, is right here on the swivel. So you have two burst discs, one at the top of the charging cylinder and one here at the base of the hose. On the front, when you run this, uh, a couple of things to keep in mind, you're gonna wanna turn or flip this switch to the on position, it was on already. And that begins the system flowing. It turns on the fan, it turns on the water coolant pump and starts the circulation of the coolant. Uh, and then we'll get into that a little bit more here in a minute when I take the cover off of this. And then again, you have your on. As soon as you hit on, it starts pumping. And then you have your off and that off switch then turns the unit off and continue to cool off for at least another 30, 40 seconds. Uh, really help to take that heat build up that's inside of there, prevent it from just sitting in the machine and allows things to cool off nicely. So we're going to take the cover off, show you what's on the inside. And uh, as soon as I get the cover off, we'll come right back to you. So hopefully I'm adding enough value to this video that you're gonna to wanna to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a comment down below for me. Those things go a long way to really helping the channel grow. So I appreciate it if you've done those things already. And if you're about to do them, thank you. Let's take a look at the inside and run through how the compressor is actually working. Let's turn it around the other way so we can see. 
On this side, we're gonna go with the air filtration system first and talk about how the air travels, and we're gonna talk about the coolant system. So first, the air enters the top of the piston from this side, it is filtered. You can buy these uh, replacement cartridges. So that is one nice thing. I know I have this in the back of my vehicle. Uh, people were worried about dust and so forth, and this will help to keep any dust out of the actual air that we're pumping into the air gun. So nice feature, it is all aluminum based in these cylinders. So these cylinders are going to cool rapidly with that aluminum. Aluminum gives off heat very readily, as well as you'll notice that the uh, cylinder is fin has fins on it as well, and that helps to alleviate or take away heat buildup on this side also. If we flip it around and move this hose around so you can see, air is going to exit the top of the cylinder head here and then run into this block. This block is where you're going to have some water separation occur. Notice the hose enters the bottom and then we have the hose coming off the top. So when it comes out the top, the water is heavier than air. That's why it rains and the rain falls from the sky, right? So that water condensation in here falls down to the bottom to the drain tube, which is drained when you bleed off the pressure uh, from your tank. And then hopefully air that has been cleansed of water will exit here. Now this is where one thing that you may want to pick up another accessory for any of these, and I say that any of these portable compressors, if you're very hyper vigilant about making sure that no water is entering your system, which is a good thing. You don't want water to enter your system and provide any corrosion or weakening of the materials in the air gun. We are talking about high pressure here. You're going to want to add a water filtration system. They come in cartridges and you can attach those to the ends of this and then again run the hose. So that would be in between that uh, the hose and your air gun at that point in time and taking the rest of the moisture out that wasn't removed from this trap. So that's the air system. Let's take a quick look at the coolant system because that coolant system is one of the features of this unit that really helps to bring some value to it and differentiates it from others on the market. So here is your coolant tank. Your coolant tank pumps the coolant out the bottom into this pump. This is your pump, your coolant pump and it pumps it to the head of the compression cylinder up here. This is where most of your heat uh, builds up in this. And from there, you're going to want to spin it the right way. You'll notice that the coolant then exits the head of the cylinder, comes down into a radiator. So you have a coolant and a radiator with a large computer type fan uh, that is going to cool that coolant down even further. And then it pumps right back into the top of the cylinder here and circulates throughout the entire system. Notice that these two pieces, the in and the outer at the bottom of this coolant tank, that allows you to run your compressor both in a horizontal position and in the vertical position as long as you have enough coolant in the reservoir. So that's why it's important that you keep this full, you're checking it uh, and making sure that you're following the manufacturer's instructions that come with this. So there's a nice little booklet that comes with it as to how full you're gonna wanna keep that. Um, otherwise, let's take a look one more, a couple more things at the top of the piston here. You have your, um, your lithium grease pot which helps to keep all the seals lubricated. You have another pressure relief. So this is a safety feature that's built in, a burst disc. And then on this side, there is another burst disc that I wanna mention right here. So you have two burst discs in the system. And then of course, this is your gauge that allows for the automatic shutoff. Now this is a system that you're gonna to wanna to monitor as it's filling up your air guns. You're not gonna to wanna to leave it alone. We are talking about high pressures up to 4,500 PSI which is a ton of pressure. So you're gonna to wanna to monitor it just in case the system does not shut off automatically. You don't wanna overfill your air gun. As far as size tanks that you're gonna to wanna to fill, you're probably gonna to wanna to stick to a pony size tank or less to fill up. And remember your run times. You're gonna to have to turn this and cycle this on and off to cool every, I wanna say 20 minutes, I'll have to look that up, but 20 minutes of uh, run time and then allow it to cool down again uh, just so you don't get a lot of heat buildup. So guys, I think this is a very high quality unit. It's been around for a long time. Don't just take my word on it. Go look at the reviews and other people, what other people are saying, whether on Airgun Nation, Airgun Warriors, 
or just the reviews of, on the company's pages that actually sell this compressor. It is a well-built compressor. It lasts a long time. It's been in the market for a long time and provides a lot of value for your money and should, if taken care of, last you a long time as well. Very simple yet very powerful in the fact that it gets you away from that hand pump and you don't necessarily have to purchase a tank to fill up your air guns. You can just do everything right here from this Omega Trail Charger Compressor. Guys, hopefully you found some value here. Remember, hit that subscribe button if you have. Give me the like. If I haven't answered all your questions and you have a question, leave it down in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer those questions for you. But until next time, make sure those trigger pulls stay smooth, those pellets fly straight, your air guns stay full, and we'll see you again next time on the Air Gun Advisor.